everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I want to share with you a really fun project you can do at home. This has just a couple colors, and you actually get to paint it with Q-tips, plus it's a mindful painting. I'm going to show you how to add a word of empowerment to your painting so you can remember the things that you're trying to focus on in your own life every time you look at it. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me with these right now. We're going to be mindfully painting. Let's take a look at the materials we're going to use today to create this beautiful and easy project. I have a 9 by 12 canvas board that is gessoed black and ready to paint on, but you could use just black paint if that's what you have. Over here, I have kids chalk that I've sharpened. I have Q-tips that I bundle together with rubber bands. I have brushes for acrylic painting and I have white paint, a gold yellow paint called yellow ochre, and I have a little more black paint. Let's sketch in our baby's breath design. But remember, I also have a traceable. If drawing is not your strongest skill yet, you can use that. That is definitely not cheating. That is just part of an art practice. So go ahead and start sketching in your mason jar. If you're going to freehand this in on your canvas, I'm using my kid's chalk. I'm going to come over to the left hand side and I'm going to make a vertical line. I'm going to come over about a hand's width and make a matching vertical line. Then I'm going to make a curve line coming down from these two. It's kind of like a little smile. Up here, I'm going to make two lines curving in for the shoulder. Then I think I'll draw another couple matching smiles that are just smaller than the bottom. And that'll be my jar lid. Now I want to have some baby's breath in my jar. So I think I'll draw a nice line coming up. And then baby's breath has a lot of joints to it. So I'm going to try to represent that. In my drawings, you can see that I'm giving it a lot of joints so that when I'm coming out here, we're going to have lots of places to put the flowers. One thing I, I don't want to do is match up joints, so make sure your joints are staggered for the design. I'm going to draw another little stem coming down this way. And it's going to cross here with a little friend. It's going to have a bunch of flowers. This might have some flowers right here. A little bunch could be here. And we'll have this bunch here. Once that's all in, I'm going to put this aside for if I decide to add a word to help me think and be present at the end of the painting. But for right now, let's just paint this in. So let's paint in our stems so that they can be inside our jar. I'm going to take this black pearl number four round. What you're looking for is a nice synthetic brush that comes to a point. I'm going to dip it in my water and drag off the extra water because I wouldn't want it to be very wet. I'm going to go ahead and put my brush in my yellow ochre and I might even grab a little white here to keep it from being too bright. But really, that's just preference. And I'm going to paint over the lines I drew. I find it helps if I keep my brush pressure very light and I only touch the tip of my brush to my canvas. That helps me maintain a fairly thin line. There's a little of this. Maybe a little white, just to give it some dimension. Everywhere you have these little areas, you're going to be putting in your baby's breath with your Q-tips. So they're fun to do. And anywhere you have a boo-boo where you put a line you didn't like, you can always paint it out with the black paint that you put aside. All right, I need to just very carefully with a very light brush painting in my stem, a little more yellow on this stem, just bringing that in. I might paint that stem a little thicker at the bottom. 
it's really, really just about having beautiful little lines. Let's put a little friend over here coming off this way. Breathing in and breathing out, remembering to relax while we paint and not be too critical of ourselves. Being self-critical doesn't help you be creative. In fact, it can really, really slow that process down. Just remember to be easy and relaxed with yourself. Now, once you have that basic stem sketch in, you can paint in the mason jar. Let's rinse out our brush and put it aside. Now. I have this number four black pearl bright. A bright is a nice square brush. This is pretty stiff springy filaments. So this is going to be easy to dry brush with. And my first little bit I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do just pure white. I'm gonna add a smidge of black. How I do that is I take just the edge of my brush to pick up the black so I don't get too much black. And I'm gonna come here and trace over very lightly with this dry brush. Notice that I just don't want any water really in my brush. I want the paint to be skipping these little lines that I sketched in. Just sketching those in. Again, remember, you don't have to be perfect. Sometimes it feels like we have to be perfect when we paint, but that is actually just somebody else's voice in our head saying we're not good enough that voice isn't telling the truth because we are good enough. All right, now that I've gone on the edge of my brush, you can see how I use the edge of my brush to get those nice thin lines. I'm gonna put in a little shading. I might add a little more white paint to my brush. Now I'm gonna come here, just across the shoulder, I'm gonna drag a little dry brush white. See how a lot of my canvas is showing through? And as I'm, taking the stroke and curving and I'm lightening my pressure, that lightens the amount of paint. A little more of my gray on there. I don't want it to be too white yet. I'm gonna come across the lid of my jar and do something similar. That's nice. Across the bottom. Just a couple little strokes. It doesn't take a lot. Just a nice gray to start. I take this one down, and then maybe add a couple. And notice how the stems start to exist inside our jar. Every time we add a reflection that crosses over them, it pushes them back into the jar. Now I'm gonna make a calligraphy kind of reflection, which is just, you'll notice I move my hand up and over and down, like I might in a calligraphy motion. I'm going to rinse out my brush dry it off with my towel so that it's real dry and get some more just white paint on there. Now, a couple of highlights right here. See how that lets the white highlight really show? Maybe you come across your lid this time with the bright white paint, making a couple dash reflections. When we paint glass, obviously we can't paint what we don't see, so we paint the things we do see, which is the reflections. A nice high reflection right there. One right here. You can always highlight down the side of the, the jar. Maybe you make a little highlight there. See how that's fun? Getting to know the light in the room a little bit. When we're happy, I'm gonna come just, see, just dust, 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 dust. With painting the part of the jar we can see, we get to put the flowers on the ends of our stems, which is the most fun. Now I'm gonna put out a little bit of this white paint because I know I'm gonna use a lot. Everything I'm using in this video is in the description below, and I'm gonna grab a bunch of these that I've done already. So I've got some of these that are four. I'm looking for them where they're all lined up, and I'm gonna go dab, 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 dabbing off to make sure they're doing okay. See how they look? And then I'm gonna to come to the end of each stem and just add some baby's breath. 
If I press light, the breath gets light. And I'm going to remember to breathe in this painting and relax. And breathe and relax. Putting in my baby's breath and remembering to be mindful of how I'm feeling. Let's put some more baby's breath right here. Can't do it wrong. Just putting bits of flowers where I feel I'll enjoy them. Filling my vase and my mind up with joyful little dots of white happiness. And you're doing great. Let's add some blooms right here. I always put out several bunches of Q-tips, so if my Q-tips get mushy and aren't showing nice little dots, I can change them out to fresh ones. But these are holding up really, really well, and I will put the exact ones I used in the description, so you can look for those too. Adding these as makes me happy. All right, when you feel that you have a good bouquet that's relaxing to your mind, you put your Q-tips to the side. Now this is a great time if you would like to add a word of mindfulness to the painting so that every time you look at it, you're reminded of the positive affirmation that you're working on. I've chosen the word breathe because I think that it's really easy to hold one's breath in life and forget to relax and let go. So let me show you how you can get really beautiful lettering on your painting. So I have my chalk here and I'm going to turn my painting to the side because I think that it will be most balanced if I neatly write the word here. I'm going to make a nice vertical line and I'm going to pull a B. This is going to set the size of all my lettering. So all my lowercase letters and the tops of my letters will be about the same size as my B belly. I'll make a nice E. So it's later. Took us a while to see it, really pretty much in the middle of the edit. What I'm gonna say is when you're writing an affirmation word to practice mindfulness, a little Google spell check, to make sure that you spelled the word correctly is good. So as you're writing your word, if you choose to write breathe, that would be spelled with an R. I'm gonna go watch simple English videos by my friend Vicki Hollett, because um, I think I need a refresher course. I'll leave that link in the description below too. And you guys enjoy the best lettering I've ever done as I misspell a word. A. Do what my word says and breathe. All right, once that's in, I'm gonna take this small bright brush, this is a number two, and I'm going to load it up with my white paint. I'm gonna use this a little bit like a calligraphy tool. So where I want a thin line, I'll go on the edge. And then I will let the brush stroke give me thick and thin lines. It's okay for these letters to be painterly. There we go, isn't that lovely? Going to remember to breathe every time I look at this. Your word could be any word you want, or maybe no word at all. 
It's your painting. I'm just following my nice trace lines and enjoying the square shape of my brush. So this positive affirmation painting really helped me today. It definitely helped me find my center and relax. And I know every time I look at it, I'll remember to breathe. I hope you enjoyed your project. I love spending the day with you today. And I wanna see what your affirmations were. So be sure and share them with me. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other. And I wanna see you at the easel really soon.